Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number six of the Gateway Project. And it is time to do some EVA construction out here on the station. It is a beautiful sunrise, so to speak, on the KSS here. And Bob Kerman is ready to get out there and get to work and do the things that he needs to do. We have about... I'd say 20 minutes based on our orbital period, how long it's taking us to go around the planet once. We have about 20 minutes of sunlight before we've gone around to the other side and we are out of the light again and we'll have to go back inside. But I think that Bob Kerman here is up to the task of getting all his things done within 20 minutes. So in the real world, there have been over 140 different missions up to the ISS, and by the time we get done with this video, I will have covered about 9 or 10 of those, although I do intend to go through all of them. Of course, I'm condensing several of them at a time into any one episode, but I will have gone through all of them by the time I'm done with this series. But before we get started with this, I have some news from down on the surface of Kerbin. Once again, Joseph Kerman has shown how powerful his network of spies and saboteurs and anti-gateway zealots has grown. Uh, one of his minions has stolen a missile carrier from the military, hijacked it, and launched a missile at our mission control, our construction facilities, our research and development buildings. Luckily, nobody was actually at work because it was a nighttime attack. Uh, but one of the buildings was damaged and w uh, some critical instruments and scientific experiments were destroyed. But here we are back. I'm ready to do my EVA. I'm going to start over here on the Z1 truss uh, and then I'm going to work my way down to Unity and then to Zarya uh, here and to Zvezda at the end right down there. So all of the EVAs I'm doing right now uh, in the real world, they took place between December 1998 and October of 2000. So one of the ones that I said I was going to need to do is to grab this strut here and uh, attach this to this arm and then extend our antenna up so that we can put ourselves in contact with our TDRS satellite. However, as soon as I grab that strut, these two little white struts are going to float away and that is going to make Bill very unhappy. So I'm going to have to actually wait and go back and get one of those containers and uh, bring the container up here so that I can put my garbage in it and then later take that garbage back. Back to Kerbin, I mean, of course. Uh, and by back to Kerbin, what I really mean is we will deorbit it and burn it up and spread its ashes all over our wonderful oceans, feeding the fish, Kerbal fish. So I don't want to be going back and forth to the trunk here of the Hydra, uh, grabbing parts and then flying back to the Z1 truss over and over again. So I'm going to take this trunk with me and because I have modded the holder for it, I can drop this off over here and go back to the trunk of the Hydra, grab the holder, bring that back down here and attach that to the Unity module or maybe the Z1 truss and then I can dock that container in there and that'll allow me to uh, keep really close to all of my parts that I need to be manipulating. Now I probably should have looked at what was inside that container uh, to make sure it was the stuff that I wanted down in this end, um, but if I remember correctly, I lucked out because it did contain what I needed in order to do my construction down on this side. Uh, so obviously this is a post commentary of all of this stuff because I'm running this at times two acceleration for the rest of my EVA. I think EVAing around at one time acceleration is just a, a little bit too slow. So we're going to go at double. Okay, now that I have my container down here, it is time to get that cubic strut and take that off of the end of the antenna arm. If you remember from the previous video, I put that cubic strut on there because those little white ones that are starting to float away now, they would have been attached to the end of the arm if I had attached those onto the arm, and they would have been left behind. Well, I guess technically I didn't 
need to do that because I could have grabbed them off of the station, maybe if they're grabbable. Anyway, I am going to go get those. I needed to make some room in that container because those containers have a limited amount of space. You can't put uh, too many things in there. Everything has a certain size and a mass, so the mass is being taken into account too. Uh, in fact, when your Kerbal is carrying one of those containers around, if it has a lot of mass in there, you go really slow. Your EVA, you have to take into account that mass, and you use up a lot of EVA fuel, and it is really slow moving. So uh, if you're going to be carrying the case around, you're going to want to be careful not to put too much in there. So yeah, getting back to the antenna arm, we have stashed away that cubic strut and those little bits. I want to extend that arm out just a tiny hair, if I can remember which of these buttons is the one that does it. And that'll give me the space I need to do the Kerbal attachment to grab on that antenna and stick it on the end of the arm, which will then be activated, allowing us to be in communication with our Tidra satellites. In a previous video, we had activated the antenna that's at the back of the station, the one on the Zvezda module, and we pointed that at one of the Tidra satellites. Uh, but there's two of them up there, and so now we have two antenna, and we can point one at each of them and uh, be always in communication no matter where we go around the station. So here I go, activating the antenna, pointing it at Tedris 1, and then I think, oh, what was the other one? Oh, that was all at Tedris 1. So we'll point that one at Tedris 2. So now they are both connected. Okay, so the Z1 truss has a cable tray that allows it to connect up and provide power once we get the uh, P6 truss brought up here in the next episode. So we'll connect that up right there, and that'll send the power down into the station. And then I run out of EVA fuel, or at least it's getting a little close and uh, it's getting dark, so I decided to take a break. Uh, I was wrong, I wasn't able to do it in 20 minutes. We need to get Aldi and Filmy in there doing some stuff as well, and so that's a good opportunity, I would say, to take a look here at the Crew Manifest mod. So what we have here is an ability to look at all the different segments of the station uh, that can contain Kerbals. So uh, you can see that I've got space in the Zvezda for six, uh, one, space for one in the Unity module, two in Zarya, and three in the command pod back here. And if you don't want an EVA to move your Kerbals around, you can just do transfer crew. And that will bring up a window here that has all of the modules on both sides. You select one from each side and then you can just transfer. So let's say we have Aldi who needs to go into, I'm going to say the body of the Zvezda. So we just select that and you can see it highlights the parts in green and red out here. So you can see what which one green and red. So you see which one you're looking at. And Aldi is now transferred into the other one. Uh, then uh, let's say that we want, how about Unity? We'll put uh, Filmy up in the Unity module. So we'll select the Unity module. It gets selected right out there. And then we say out. And now we have our guys uh, out in the other modules. And we don't have to EVA to do that. So it's much more realistic because it seems like uh, or in order to close that, you have to close that first and then that. So it, it's more realistic because it seems like uh, they traveled down through the station and just went through the normal passageways. Bob Kerman, your break is done. No more coffee for you. Get out there and do some more EVA. So we're going to go and get another case and bring that up there because I need some more parts. And uh, in the real ISS, they attach some tool trays and things like that. And so this is just sort of a simulation of that anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So we will float back down to the other side, to the Z1 truss, and just scoot up here and attach this rack to the side of the Z1 truss. That Z1 truss in our dimension uh, was brought up on the shuttle Endeavor, and that was actually the very first shuttle mission that brought uh, any parts or anything, just the very first shuttle mission that went to the ISS. It docked itself to that PMA that's there on the end of the Unity module, and that allowed it to open up its cargo bay and reach in there with the robotic arm and uh, grab onto the Z1 truss, and it rotated it up and then just attached that on the other side there of the Unity module. 
I wonder how cool that must have been, being the guy that's up there in the shuttle, grabbing on to the Z1, or anything for that matter, just going up in a shuttle and going into that zero G, floating around, uh, hopefully not throwing up everywhere because you actually can't handle it, but of course we'd all be great up there, right? Yeah. All right, we just finished hooking up an antenna, and there was an EVA that did hook up an antenna on the Unity module uh, in an R dimension. Uh, and now we are putting on some DC to DC converters. I'm simulating those with just a couple batteries. And an EVA did attach a couple of those up onto the Z1 truss. So our work on this end of the module is almost complete. Once we get that hooked up, uh, the Unity will take a look at that just to make sure there's nothing left on that. That Unity module, that's actually quite a complicated little thing. It's got 50,000 mechanical items in our dimension, uh, over 200 fluid lines, over 100 electrical cables with six miles of wire running through it uh, in that tiny little thing. So here we're going to do a little bit of cleanup. I'm grabbing that light because I didn't think that I needed uh, so many lights close together. And one of my problems, I think, is that when I start rendering lots of lights, I get lag. And it's a part. And so I just want to reduce the parts and reduce the light counts. So we're going to move that light down to a different location. But then this one, when I do a little survey of the station, I don't really think that there's another spot that needs light. So I just decide I'm going to stash it in the container and deorbit it later. We'll also grab this pipe endpoint. I had put that out there because I didn't have enough space before to put it in to the container, but now because I've moved some things around, I did have some space and I was able to put it back in that container. So I had said that I wanted to strut the uh, Z1 truss down here to Unity. So by grabbing that and then just using the B and N keys, you can rotate it and uh, do a link and put struts on things that in, are in orbit. Uh, I know that there's this mod called Quantum Struts that automatically attaches struts, but I like these real ones that you get out there and you just do it by hand and it uh, feels a little bit more accomplished. So it was time to do another top off of my EVA fuel and it had gotten darker again. So we let the orbit go around once and then we head out here with a brand new supply of monopropellant and uh, take that case and bring it over here because again, I don't want to be flying all over the place carrying these things around. So I'm going to take this one over here with me because what I plan to do now is take some of the RCS blocks off as well as uh, attach up some power cables in between the Zarya and the Zvezda module. So. So I was planning to just carry that around with me, and then I realized it didn't have one of the parts I needed. So instead, I put it back and fly to the other side into the hydro trunk, uh, grab the pipe end point from there, and then I can go and put the other side of the connector for the Zarya and the Zvezda. Interestingly, in the real world, uh, the ISS, the Zarya module, was supposed to be able to act autonomously for six to eight months, uh, but it had to actually go for uh, more than two years while it was waiting for the Zvezda to come up there and dock with it. So now I want to get these RCS blocks and take the ones that are actually functional off, leaving behind just the ones that are there for eye candy that don't really do anything. That way I'll reduce my part count. Unfortunately, I had forgotten to actually mod the part to make it grabbable. So here is how you do that. Uh, there is an Kerbal attachment system, a file that you modify and you put in some text like you just saw right there, and that makes parts grabbable. You can specify some realistic values for their uh, their size that they take up, the bulk of space that they take up. You're not actually affecting their mass or anything like that, but you are. Uh, trying to guess it, how many you could fit in one of those boxes, and then you set their size appropriately. So after doing that eight times, I will have all of those taken away, reducing the part count. And being almost done, we just need to do a little bit more work on the Zvezda. A Zvezda means star in Russian, by the way. Uh, interestingly, that was uh, the first time, I think, maybe that someone had ever paid to put their logo on the side of a rocket for advertising purposes. Pizza Hut did that. Uh, they paid one million dollars in order to get their logo on the so side of the rocket that launched Zvezda. So I was going to put that engine right there. That's a monopropellant engine. 
Uh, I was going to put that away in the crate and deorbit it, and then it wouldn't fit, and all my crates are full. So I decided instead I would attach it to the side of the Zvezda and uh, put those where maybe they should have been there all along, actually, because the Zvezda is supposed to be a service module and is supposed to help the station to maintain its orbit. In our world, the ISS, I think, loses a couple... Uh, meters per second on its orbit every single month and so it has to regularly boost its orbit back up again because in the real world of course there's no magic line where the atmosphere ends. Right so the Zvezda based on the Mir 2 plans but that never got launched due to issues with their budget the Russians sent it up with no insurance and no backup plan so it's a good thing it actually worked unlike mine. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for this time. We'll do the P6 truss in the next episode, and Kerbonauts, I will see you later.